Uh, the woman who should have headlined Bellator 300, she didn't, but it doesn't matter. She got a big win over Katzengano and uh, is one of the greatest of all time. Of course, our old friend, Chris Cyborg, she's joining us right now on the program. Hello, Chris. How are you? Congratulations on the win. Thank you, Ariel. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm great. Oh, yes, I can imagine. By the way, why weren't you headlining? You should have been in the main event, Chris. I'm not trying to make a big deal out of it, but that should have been your spot. It should have ended with you and your, and your win over Cad. Why weren't you in the main event? I don't know, but I don't want to complain. I'm happy. I'm got a great victory. People love the fight. It was an exciting fight, and it was good. Okay. Did you lose your voice? I lose my voice. I screamed too much this, 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 this week. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Celebrating whatnot. Um, uh, so another huge win for you. Uh, and uh, obviously, you know, you and Kat had a bit of a history together. To get that kind of dominant, decisive win over her, uh, when you were preparing for the fight, did you think that that's how it was going to go? Or did you think it would be a bit of a longer fight and perhaps a bit of a tougher fight for you? You know, I was prepared for the tough fight. You know, uh, I was prepared a lot for for Kat Zingarano. Much respect for her. I think she's a legend. She beat Amanda Nunes. She beat Misha Tate. You know, I prepared everything. I prepared grappling. I prepared wrestling. I trained strike. Uh, of course, the strategy. I was didn't want to grapple her, but I was can grapple her. But I want to keep fight stand up, and and to find the opportunity. But I didn't know it was going to be quick. It's amazing. You know, last week I was talking about this. Uh, Last last week was the 15 year anniversary of the last Elite XC show, and you were on that card. And now to see you, yeah, all the, it's like the, your longevity is is really incredible. Um, to see like you're you're the bookends really of like women's MMA history. It's amazing, right? 15 years ago, you're on that card, and now here you are on Bellator 300, defending your title, still at the top of the game. Man, this is a blast. I, I know. I feel very, very thankful. This is Janet. My mom is 70 years old. She's she don't stop. She's crazy. She's swimming. She's lift weights. She's work all day. I tell her mom, now you have to relax. They're like, no, I want to work. And no, uh, for sure, you know, my mom is one reason and she's an example for me. But you know, make me really happy, bless. I, I love my job. And when you love a job, work every day, happy and gratitude, you know, when you're going to work. Uh, it's really cool. I mean, I'm happy. I'm I'll be continue doing good. Did you think you would last this long? Like was that was that part of your your goal? Was that part of your plan? You know, one of the things I would say, you know, I want to complete maybe 20 years fighting. Uh, I turned 18. Um, but I always, you know, pray for the Lord. You know, he's giving me the, 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 the telling me. I'm going to fill my heart when the time to stop. He's going to, I'm going to know. Mm -hmm. And, and um, but, you know, I don't have any bad injury. I really take care of my body. I feel out to the fight. I'm not just a training when I have a fight. I really... Uh, train off season in season, you know, because it's really important. When you train, because the fight is hard, you can get injury. But you know, and then I go to I, I go to Colombia, do the stem cells work, by accelerate. And you know, I really red cells, red. I have a red bed, a hyperbaric. So I really, I really take care of my body for me to continue doing good. You know, I want to continue. If I continue longer, I want to continue doing good. Uh, and I'm very curious to see what, what the future holds, not only for you, but Bellator. Of course, we can't ignore that there's a lot of rumors about the uh, the future. And I don't even think rumors is the fair thing to say because it's all very true. And so can I just ask you, like last week, what was the vibe like? What did you feel? H how did it feel, you know, this event? How, how did the, the, the whole atmosphere feel for you? You know, the first I was really happy because it was in San Diego. I lived in San Diego for six years. It's a lot of emotion, too. Because there I was living in the car with my dog. Wow. Everywhere I go, I remember good size, bad size. Um, the arena when I fought there too. Um, I was I got a, I fight for I defend my title too. Uh, when Strike Force, it was the same arena. Um, I went to the fight around the Rosa side of Kaufman there. And that fight then kicked me out. They said I cannot stay there because I believe Ronda don't want to be there when I was there in the first four. So it's so much things there around. But it was, you know, the event was amazing. Um, you know, I wanna I wanna say thank you to Mike Cogan. He's put a lot of work there because it was the full people there. You see his work all day, all day. You see his in the phone, they're all busy. You know, he's put it together. A shout out for him. It was an amazing event, the fireworks. It was really special. It reminds a little bit of the events, you know, having Japan with all the fireworks, you're yeah. walking, you know, it's really special. It's really nice to be part of the 
Bellator 300. I don't feel anything weird in the fight. I know as a fox to the fight to get Zingano, but you know, everybody happy and excited. Everybody asking what's going to happen. No, I don't control what's going to happen. I just have to control training and uh, thinking about the next opponent. Did it feel like the end though of the of the, of, a, of an era potentially? Did it feel like the last show to you? No, you know, I was still, I would then talk about it being Bellator 301. Yeah. So, and then I face off the next uh, contender for defending my title. So I didn't feel like you know Leah was there. Um, I, I didn't feel this. Okay. Um, I, I know, j- just last question on this. I know like you've had a bit of a back and forth with the PFL guys. If PFL did buy Bellator, would you not want to fight for them? No, I have more fights in my contract, you know? Okay, I so want to you... keep work. And then and they have girls there to fight, you know? I have people there. I have people there. <laughs> yes. Is there one in particular that interests yeah. you? Yes. I have a lot of people that are interested, you know, but I have one there everybody wants to see. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> I feel like we're close here. This is like the most open you've been to that. You're talking about Kayla Harrison, of course, right? Yes. Uh, uh, Kayla Pacheco, she's the champion. I know Kayla's yes. going to fight again now again. Um, we already been prepared for this fight, you know. You guys watch Cats and Gun fight. Um, my last fight was Southpaw. Cats and Gun was Southpaw. And then Kayla Southpaw. You know, it'll be, it'll be work on, it'll be training. Uh, how would you feel if, if Bellator did get purchased by PFL? Is this good for the sport, bad for the sport? How do you feel? Uh, you know, for me, uh, I, 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 of course, I'm going to be less sad, but I'm going to I'm gonna continue bringing the name with Bellator for sure because, you know, I defend my title six times there. And then is is those amazing event, give it the opportunity for a lot of, for a lot of, for a lot of fighters. Um, of course, it'd be sad it's good, better when you have more events yeah. because they have more options for the fighters and then for negotiation, for everything. So it's more important to have more. And it'll be sad if you're not going to be happy, you know? Yeah. Um, the end of your fight with Kat, um, she, didn't wa- she didn't want to embrace. Uh, could you tell me what she said to you afterwards there when, when you were going over to her? Uh, at the time, I, I, I really hug my opponents after the fight. I don't hate my opponents. No one I hate. Even if I lost, I don't hate. Is that a sport for me? So I will say thank you for her. And then and then she say, I don't want to be your friend. I don't want to be her friend. I just say thank you for accepting the fight. Thank you for making this work. Thank you for making the exciting fight. Um, and then she said, oh, you are a stalker. You are going to be my friend. And she's always crazy. And then and I didn't understand it. Stalker, why? Because I, I study my opponent. Because every single video she put, I, I watch all the single video. Two years ago, I watch all her videos. Like, uh, Stalker, we have to be prepared for our opponent. You know, my team study. Um, she just started to make this person. Say, I'm a shitter. I'm a juice box. Uh, make the commission come here every three weeks in my house. Like I did everything she's she's asking for for make the fight happen. I did, mm. you know. Um, and then she she get him. I know she get mad about the website, but the business. If you know, if you're a fighter, and you have a name, you don't know, have your own be own website. This is a business. People are gonna buy your website, and if you wanna buy it back, you have to pay for get it. Mm. This is this is the reality. Is this a business? And. That's it. It was the way to promote the fight. It was cool. And I respect Kat Zingano. She's a big name, a legend, pioneer in the sport. I still going to continue respect. It doesn't matter what's happening that night. Um, and she's the girl beat Misha Tate. The girls beat the fight Ronda Rousey, beat the Amanda Nunes. So much respect for her. You, you said that she uh, accused you of PDs and all this stuff and the commission came. How many times did they come to your house to test you? Um, uh, I think maybe four or five. Wow. And is that more than usual? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. For just random testing from California. Yes. And yeah. and was she also tested to the best of your knowledge that many times? I believe so too. Okay. Yeah, everybody. Okay. Um, and so, and so you, you beat her and, uh, right after Leah McCord comes in and, and earlier in the night, Leah McCord beat Sarah McMahon. Were you surprised by that? I was surprised a little bit. I was thinking Sarah was going to win, you know? Yeah. Um, 
But it was nice. Uh, she did the same take out she did in Katzengan, in judo. Mm -hmm. you no, know, she did the same take out. Watched the fight so many times. She, it was the same take it out. You know, Sara got it. I didn't watch the fight yet, but I watched some clips. And Sara got the back, stayed too long there, and she did the judo throw the takedowns, and like same she did in Katzengan. And so then she comes to the cage, and then, so you face off. And so I was wondering once again, like, is this fight even going to happen? I don't, I, like, I don't know what's because I'm hearing, Chris. I don't know what you're. I, I'm hearing 301 is a little bit up in the air. That there's some debate who's uh -huh. going to pay for it. Like, this is what I'm hearing on the streets. You know what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. And so I'm like, oh, Chris, Leah, that's a fun fight. Leah is a great story. It's a fresh matchup. But I'm like, where is this going to happen? Under what umbrella? When? Where? When you're facing off against her, is it just like they bring her in? You do it. Are you thinking the same thing? Like, oh, is there is there, is there another event that I don't know about? No, the reality, I I ask it if he, um, they ask me who's I want to fight next. Yeah, and I I know, I know she was there on the, the line for fight for the title. When she finished the fight, I call her name. I didn't know she's gonna be facing me off when I was talking about her. Mm. But then I saw her. She's inside the tag. But I was gonna say, yeah, she was the next. And I, would do, I, just, I saw Sakibara there. I said, maybe it can be in Japan because uh -huh. it's one of my dream. So um, then I said, because she was the next in the line. But I didn't know she was going to be facing me off there. But she was there already, you know, and she was already, say, training and be ready. So let's see. If she just continue fighting, and they continue fight, eventually this fight's going to happen. Now, if you're not going to be the next, maybe. Let's see what's the fight that people want to watch, really. Okay. So I saw you tweet the uh, Japanese flags. Is that a possibility? Like, are they telling you that maybe because of the transition that you could fight in Ryzen? I'm assuming like New Year's Eve. Is is that what you're alluding to? Is this is this possible? You no, know, I would like it's the one of my dream. You know, and then uh, I ask it can be like Valetudo before I shoot the box style. Mm. Can be Leah. Can be another person too. So we're gonna be ready. Okay, um, that would be something. That would be very cool. She 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 told me that she would like to fight you in Belfast though in, in Northern Ireland and that you would be open to that. I said I don't think that she would be open to go to Northern Ireland, but then she said she heard that you would I be open. Go, go, you would go, go to Northern yeah, Ireland, I, really? I go, I go. I have a lot of fans there. I bet. And I think I split the. I can. I think I can split the the, the crowd. Really? I you would go to enemy territory as the champion, as the long uh, the long standing champion. You would go to Northern Ireland to fight in the challenger's hometown. That that says a lot about you. I don't think a lot of people in your position would do that. You know, I came here to fight Gina Carano here. That's and true. Everybody against me at that time. Yeah, Maybe but you weren't a long time champ. You weren't years. I mean, that was 2009. That was a, cr a crazy time ago, right? So. Yes. And everybody against me. And that thing motivated me. I said, man, this is my time. I don't going to know who I am. So then, then that make me excited. It's nice to have something like this. It's unbelievable. Lead XC, Strike Force, Invicta, UFC, Bellator. The amount of promotions, top level promotions that you have fought for. I'm assuming there was a part of you that thought you would finish your career with Bellator, but maybe you add another one to the list. That would be fun, no? I know I was thinking the same thing, but yes. And then you know, uh, the people asking me, like, uh, no match five five titles, Chris. So no I have no I have fighters did the four titles, you know, five titles are gonna be man, very blessed. We're gonna finish the career and uh Gold key. Yes. By the way, uh, uh, you said the Sarah Kaufman fight against Ronda Rousey back in San Diego all those years ago. I think that was 2011, maybe? 11. Yeah. yeah. Why 11. did they kick you out? Uh, I believe it's because, um, okay, I stayed close to the cage the whole event. Yeah. <laughs> and when Ronda's going to walk to the ring, there comes one little lady kicking me out, say, you cannot stay here in the first floor. To say, you I said, my room is in my tickets here. So no, you cannot. You have to go to up. They say it's because the commission, mm. and then they kick me out there. And then I was okay, but I watched Far Away to Fight and go home. Okay. Wow. Crazy. Did you see Rhonda's mom? She was working the event. I saw her last time when I went to Bellator, but I didn't see her yesterday. Okay. I didn't see her uh, like Saturday. When you saw her last time, did, she, did she say anything to you? Uh, for, uh, for, for um, then the, the commission introduced me to her, and then I, she didn't know who I am that time, I think. And then I said, yeah. ah, it's Chris Cyborg. And then and then she say, uh, you lovely person. And I say, I'm just knowing lo lovely in the cage. 
I am, <laughs> but it was cool. It was cool, you know. Wow, uh, I'm surprised that she wouldn't know who you are. That's uh, a little bit surprising. Maybe you know. I yeah. mean, I, maybe not. Maybe not because I'm a different. When I'm fighting, and I'm a different person. So I was not fighting there. I was, in, you know, just dressed up nice, you know, for the event. One thing I always appreciate about you, uh, you remind me a little bit like a boxer in the sense that you really and, and your team, you 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 guys really promote your fights. Like the little things, like your 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 outfit on the fight, like you do the Chargers style, right? Or wherever you're yes. fighting. These are things that I, I I don't want to see you fight in a uniform. I like that you put like a little local flavor into what you're you're wearing. Uh, even at the weigh-ins, you had the cross on your on your face, the red cross. What did that signify? Uh, for me, it's, it's a the Jesus Christ, my savior, and I believe it. And then I want to share my faith, hope, and and give hope to people to overcome. So, and then I want to shout out to people in Israel too. It's a tough day is now there. So, and then I like to share my faith and I felt my heart. Who shall I have in my, who shall I have in my Brazilian colors, yeah. you know, in the face. And then the cross represented not just my country, but the world. So uh, it was a different message I want to give. We have some moments, kids, really important. We, we give the hope for people. I love that. Um, and who's who's in charge of like the outfit that you go with the different sports teams and stuff? Is this your idea? Is this someone else's? Idea? Is this Ray's idea? Who who designs all of this? Because the this one I think might have been. It's my team. It's my team. They ask me Chris, then give me the options. Okay. You know, and then and then give me the option. They show me the options because this is nice. When you do this, you got it. You get it for the crowd too. You know, and it's nice when you go to the CD and you appreciate the CD open it for you. And we do every city we go in, we we make this appreciate somebody, you know. Yes. Even if we use the jersey, you know, the junior Siwa. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a really nice story. It's a really nice, a sad story, but you know, it's um, after what happened, the people study, you know, for sure can help with other players, and we like to shout out to legends. You know, can want to make a difference in sport. Yes, the great junior sale. And uh, I see you're rocking the, the Bitcoin uh, thingy there, the scan thingy. Did you get, uh, I know you're a Bitcoin athlete. Did you get a lot from the fans that people tip you? I didn't check yet. Okay. But I want to shout out all my, fl- my friends, you know, my family, Bitcoin family. And we're always going to conference and learn more and more. And I believe, I believe in the Bitcoin. I believe it. They kind of control us there, and we have the freedom. <laughs> and for, I saw forty nine thousand uh, subscribers on OnlyFans. I mean, you're crushing it, Chris. You know, and then I'm crushing it, training, doing good things. This is the nice thing. So I really appreciate all my fans and the OnlyFans. Um, it's a little, it's, it's different. We have put some video on YouTube too, but over there, it's getting more. You get more if you'd like to have more. We put every week, of, you know, trainings and uh, travel. It's really cool, you know. It's, it's the, fans, the fans want to know you more. Yeah. So when you just fight, uh, they don't know who you are. So when you make it more special for the fans, they get it connected with you. So they will really know. The beginning of my career, they think you are really mean. So then now me, I'm mean, but sometimes I have to switch. Oh. So when you watch the other fans, they know Chris. And then when I go to the fight, they're going to know Cyborg. So I, I have to switch. It, your, your evolution as a, as a person has... Uh come such a lot like i remember interviewing you in uh, sunrise florida in 2008 prior to that elite xc event and we were outside yes. with your translator yes. i forget well, your I coach remember. and you did you were very intimidating and you spoke no english and like to see this version of you now is uh is a great thing so it's uh it's it's amazing to see how long you have you have by the way what do you remember from that night when kimbo fought uh, seth petrozelli like were you in the back were you hearing things what what comes to mind when you think of that night no funny because uh after I have a fight when I fight Gina Carano, I didn't talk, talk either. She didn't talk either. So then after um, we entered to, I went to a lion fight for watch. And I saw her there. Oh. And then we start talking to each other because like we didn't speak English at the moment. It is very weird when you really don't know the person, you know. And then I think, it, I think it, um, uh, people are afraid because I didn't speak anything, but it, my style fighter. Uh, but I I like fight that style. I know it's a violent style. I like it. I think it's the who, who I am. I like violence fight, uh, strike fights, and 
I think it's exciting for the fans. Yes. So uh, in a perfect world, when do you fight again? December. <laughs> perfect word. Okay. Yes, the rest of one week and back to training. So I'm... I don't have time to lost. I have to keep it work, keep it work hard. Well, uh, enjoy this victory. Congratulations, Parabens. And uh, looking forward to what's next for you, Chris. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Ariel. Thank you, all my fans. And I appreciate every single one, every single message. And thank you for the opportunity, Ariel. Always. There she is, Chris Cyborg, coming off the big win. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.